get your balls to the wall, man. Eventually, after several tries, you get your balls to the wall, man. <laughs> Welcome to the show, guy. folks. This is a Balls to the Wall, a.k.a. Freaker's Ball, when Moose Girl is not around. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I have a few technical difficulties getting going there. And I blame it all on Skype. I fired up the Skype tonight because uh, uh, Vinny's coming around, and for whatever reason, Skype didn't want to lo let me log in. I had to go through several permutations and then re eventually reset a password. Pain in the ass, freaking Microsoft bullshit. Anyway, <laughs> we're here now. It's Friday. It's March the 2nd, 1st. Freakers slash Balls to the Wall, show of March 2018, March 2nd, 2018, and uh, glad to have you all here, I'm glad to be here, I'm surprised that I'm here, <laughs> after going through all that uh, non monkey nonsense that I went through to get here, uh, anyway, we are live, we're on reallibertymedia.com, channel one, as per normal, and also live on the RLM radio stream, which goes out to everywhere, everywhere. But uh, primarily, you can get there via rlmradio.xyz or on the main reallibertymedia.com website. It's also there on the Freedoms Network for you, or TuneIn, or uh, Internet Radio, or uh, oh, I don't know, wherever else. It's there. It's out there. It's in various places. So if you're listening to me, you know where to find it. And if you're not listening to me, then I'm not even talking to you because you can't hear me. <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome to everybody uh, that may be loud to listen again. And I know here in the RLM chat, we got the uh, barman and the cowboy tech, myself, the moose girl. Her name is here, but she is not here. She is out having a good time partying on the town. Miss Kate's here with us tonight, and Beth Z, and Calcedonia, and Chloe, and freaking, free, free, <laughs> you trying to make it difficult on me there? Freaking Sheriff v Vi, who has clean balls, because he just took a shower, so his balls are were to the shower wall, I guess, I, I don't know, I don't even want to know. Uh, free enslaved with his Graham Z, Don C, and the Java Doctor. And, uh, JJ's sleeping probably. Wanna Taco, Meester Brow, Rain, uh, uh, the Fluke Bot, our, uh, Rob Works. What? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, Rob Works and Trust No One, and, uh, BTC Bob and Colfax and Dakota and Damon Frumpy. Oh, he went, Frumpy went back to his name. All right, he was he was using some other funny name there for a while. And we got Kozu in, uh, several Meister Brows. Down below, Meister Brows 2, 3, and 4. Okay. Um, hi, all you Meister Brows. And we got the MM Bot and Moe and Mr. Asmodeus, Poxified in the Pone Sauce and Slim Jim Flem, who appeared on the Grammy show for a little bit there earlier. I, and, and my thoughts, my personal thoughts on this. Grammy, you're a brave, brave woman, Grammy. Having Slim Jim Flem live on the radio with you that, that's kind of like the Russian roulette version of live radio. You never know what's going to happen with that one. Anyway, we also got Teddy and Phantom. So uh, welcome to y'all that are here in the chat and those of you that are out there not in the chat that may be listening in from uh, some other place. I, I, I don't know. Um, oh, look at that. We got new requests coming in. All right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, we got some funny fuckers here in the chat, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> Because of my little Skype incident prior to the show, I didn't even have time to set up uh, my videos that I normally do ahead of time, which, uh, Mohammed Zepetto. Okay, well, that's not really news, but thank you for that little tidbit. Um, <laughs> oh, God, we're saving that for later. All right. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, we're going to do this one, though. We are going to do that one. Where'd it go? I lost it. I just saw it. Where'd it go? My eyes, my brain. You know, I, I tell you, I, I don't know what's going on with the old brain, 
but it's not working like it should. <laughs> I woke up this morning, and today, today is Friday, right? All day, as some people would tell you. Yeah, it's Friday, all right. Um, so anyway, this morning when I woke up, it was around 7, quarter after maybe. I don't know exactly what time it was. Anyway, my first thought, and, and I don't even know why this was my first thought, because the fact it's not normally something I consider immediately upon waking up. But my first thought this morning when waking up was, what day is this? Is this Monday or Tuesday? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> and, and I had no no recollection of what day it possibly might have been until I got in here to the computer and I looked at the computer and it said Friday. <laughs> I was like, boy, I, w <laughs> I was way off. <laughs> I don't even know what fuck you... <laughs> uh, and I, <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, the old brain, you know, it, it used to work really well. These days, I'm not, I, I just, uh, you know, I'm not really sure about it anymore. It, it plays games with me. It t t tells me things that are wrong. Praying? No, I'm not praying for anything. What are you talking about? The hell would I be praying? Uh, it, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, ha well, oh, yeah, that's right. It was a full moon last night. And I remembered that because I went to the grocery store last night, which is over there in the uh, town of Edgewood, uh, down the road about eight miles. A and uh, so as I'm driving back, I drive back towards the east. And so there in my uh, front window of my Jeep was the big old full moon there hanging in the sky as I'm driving back. <laughs> Anyway, I, I don't I don't know what to say. I'm gonna start playing some music right now because, um, well, uh, cause I can, cause I can, and I want to, and I'm still trying to get my bearings on a few other things here. So uh, hopefully you'll enjoy these. What, what the hell is that? I clicked the wrong thing there. I don't know what I clicked, but here is some music for you. Um, are you buying? I'm not. I, I I'd buy if it was there actually available. Shepherd Band from way back in 1997, doing Slow Ride. Uh, yeah, before that, that was, most of you probably have not heard that song before, the, the one I played before that. That was a, a new, new song by Ministry off of their new album. The song is called Twilight Zone. Now, a, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of Ministry fans are, are not um, enthralled with that song, I really enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> I tell you, I, I thought it was a great, it's a great new song by them. They're making fun of Trump there and the New World Order and, and uh, all the nasty things being done by uh, various other governments around the world. Um, and, and, and so to me, I dig that by ministry. So anyway, that's off of the brand new album coming out. Uh, called America K K Ant. <laughs> yes, America Ant with uh, triple K's there for that. <laughs> Which you know. <laughs> anyway, we kicked it off there with Megadeth doing uh, peace cells. But who's buying? I ain't buying it. I mean, I would buy. It. I'd I'd love to buy some peace if if it was available. If you could just buy it. Yeah, um, but uh, apparently it's only being sold to the people that believe it's that they're trying to get peace, when what they're really doing is is trying to kill you all. Well, 
They're trying to kill a lot of people, not just you all, obviously. Uh, they're doing, they're, they're killing you in a different way than they're killing the rest. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that, that's kind of the story there with that particular track. And and you know, Megadeth is awesome. For those of you that enjoy that that uh, that style. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I may be a, a week a week late on this next one, but that's all right. I'll, I'll remember to state that after we play the next set. Oh, uh, anyway, yeah, because it was a note there, a comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, let, me, let me spell it out here in the chat. Amara can't. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love ministry anyway, you know, but <laughs> there's a lot of, like I said, a lot of the ministry fans that are maybe not so uh, woke, <laughs> as the saying goes, um, they're not really into that song. They really, they, they don't, they don't, they don't care for it. Um, but yeah, that's just, just kind of the way it is. Uh, too bad, too bad, so sad. All right, we're going to start off with a weed story here. <laughs> and, and, and I wonder, I wonder, 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 can I get some of this? I don't know. Almost all cannabis, cannabis, not marijuana, almost all cannabis on Britain's streets Super strength. And then they go off into could be driving mental health problems, which we know is a massive lie. But from the telegraph.co.uk, nearly all cannabis on Britain's streets is now super strength skunk. And I say, bring it on. Anyway, they say that could be fueling a rise in mental health problems, scientists have warned. Researchers at King's College London tested a thousand police seizures from Kent, Der Derbyshire, Merseyside, Sussex, and the capital in 2016, and found 94% were of a, and get this, dangerously high potency. <laughs> <laughs> danger, danger, dangerous, dangerously high potency. <laughs> oh, bring it on! Anyway, in 2005, just five or 51 percent of cannabis sold on the street was Sinsamea, also known as skunk. Dr. Marty D. Forty, Medical Research Council clinician, scientist, geez, you got a long enough title there, at King's College, warned that a powerful drug placed Britain's 2.1, powerful drug, we're talking about weed here, uh, placed Britain's 2.1 million cannabis users, and I'm sure the number is much higher than that, assholes, at risk of schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, depression, psychosis, delusion, and hallucinations. Now, first off, let me just say, hallucinations is a good thing, if that's what you're going for. <laughs> However, weed is not going to give you schizophrenia, bipolar dis disorder, depression, psychosis, or delusions. It may actually cure some of those things. But no, that's not the way it's being reported here on the Telegraph. The increase of high-potency cannabis on the streets poses a significant hazard to users' mental health, they say, liars, and reduces their ability to choose more benign types. It consists, uh, it's of concern that 94% of the seized or stolen weed, cannabis, is now of skunk type, as this potentially could increase the number of people using it, and consequently the number of people experiencing harm ain't no harm ain't no harm it's all good it's 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 we're talking about good stuff here not bad stuff 
<laughs> so <laughs> I don't know why they're coming off, but uh, that, that, that's their story, and they're sticking to it. Um, <sighs> craziness, I would say. I, w I think I think I think many of you might just quite agree. Yeah, yeah. get the skunk, get the skunk. And and I'm, I'm just trying to imagine. Have they been smoking dirt weed all these years, and now suddenly they got something good, and they call that dangerously potent? I don't know, but uh, it's it's a load of crap, no matter how you look at it. Look at that, we're getting some old school lemon there. In, in in the listings, <laughs> oh yeah. Now who was talking? I think it was Go Gooberzilla earlier there talking in the chat about about screw Google and and the craziness of Google. Well, let me tell you about this little story. What are you talking about? I don't know. She's talking about something else. I thought Chloe was talking, still going back to that Ministry album, but no, she's going to something else. The, the name of the song I played by Ministry, Chloe, in case you're looking for it, uh, was called Twilight Zone. Anyway, this from thefederalist.com. Federalist.com. Google Shopping bans gun, the word gun, G-U-N, searches, but not for machetes, pipe bomb materials, or rocket launchers. <laughs> this by uh, Joy Pullman over there. She says, on Twitter early this morning, Ryan Fitz flagged something weird. Google Shopping returns no results for any search containing the word gun. So she did a search here and did a screen capture. For the word toy gun, no returns, no none, none whatsoever. Nothing with the word gun in it gets any Google Shopping results, even if part of another unrelated word, try it. So somebody shopped or, or searched for glue gun. Glue gun. You know what a glue gun is. It's, it's, a, it's, it's those things you make little crafty things out of. Nothing. Not a, not a damn re result. Um... So, they, after that, since she did some searching of her own, if Google would not return results for the searches with the word gun, no longer in the word, she tried gun smoke or the last gun slinger. Nothing. Nothing. You can't even look up the old TV show gun smoke or the last gun slinger. Not even toy and recreational guns such as airsoft. Type in airsoft and you'll get nothing. Try, uh, how about any Get your gun. Nope, cannot do that either. Nothing with the word gun. Book gun for girls. How about the band Guns N' Roses? Zero. How about Tom Cruise's movie Top Gun? Nothing. Nope, Guns of August, Pulitzer Prize winning. 2004, History of World War One. Nope, nothing. The Guns of Navarone, also gone. <laughs> what isn't blocked, however, are plenty of other instruments of war, such as battle axes, hand grenades, and rocket launchers. That's right. <laughs> I know it's probably not too easy to find rocket launchers out there, but you can still search on them and you will, will still get results. Also not blocked from Google search shopping searches is the more creative weapons, such as assassin's blade, crossbow, compound bow, and machete. <laughs> Now, lastly, she has been told that the two items below are the main ingredients for a pipe bomb. I really don't know anything about that. I'm not doing any searches on it because I don't want the FBI kicking down my door. Yes, she's a mom with little kids, and she has no wish to harm anyone. Okay? At any rate, those reported ingredients are freely available on Google Shopping. So if you ever do your personal self want to make some pipe bombs, you can buy the ingredients right there on Google Shopping, but you cannot get yourself a BB gun or an airsoft gun or uh, any Guns N' Roses album, which is probably a blessing to you. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know,
don't want no Guns N' Roses albums. <laughs> Uh, but if you're looking for old TV episodes of Gunsmoke on DVD, you're out of luck. Not on Google Shopping, anyway. Uh, you can probably find these on other other places. Uh, yeah, yeah, front page, or, or uh, what is it, front page? Was that uh, FP? Yeah, I think that's front page. DuckDuckGo. There's a lot of other search engines out there that are good, that are cool. Um, oh, by the way, and let me, oh, I closed that. Uh, never mind. Well, I'll open it just for this. Um, I closed my, uh, my my email when I come online here. But uh, I, 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 uh, oh, look at that, HostGator. Not what I'm looking for. Okay, um, not that one, not that one. Um, not that one, not that one. Oh, I may, I may, I may have gotten rid of all those. Um, all the, those 12 160s, okay. Let me just go over there. Okay, there it is. Yeah, uh, over on uh, 12160.info on their forum, uh, a guy earlier this week posted a, uh, a posting up there talking about alternative, uh, ver various alternative things. Um, and one, one section of that is search engines. But he's got also for uh, uh, video, YouTubes, um, uh, various uh, other text chat uh, things like that, talks chat, uh, Social media alternatives. He mentions Gab and Minds and VOAT, and I told him he should look up uh, Freedom's Network on there. Um, so, so um, I, I've been a member of 12160 for years. I, I never used it though uh, until I, I saw that list come out uh, the other day, and, and I decided, oh, well, let me go in there and toss in my personal comment on that. So uh, it, it's alternatives, alternatives for um, all, all those various things. If you don't, you don't want to be using Google for searches and such, uh, just, just go over there, and uh, you could find some some good stuff. I'll put that into the, the post show blog as well. All right, um, let, let's play some more music here. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of let's see, let's see what's going on here in chat. But Meister Brow saying PLC, PLC, rather than SPLC, like he always does. Um, Vinny is talking about lemons that he smoked. He's probably smoking lemons with the, uh, with, with, with the, with the ducks. Um, <laughs> who else we got here? <laughs> I don't know. They're talking about Jenny, Jenny, who can I turn to? Um, <laughs> don't ask me why. Um, electric glue guns, yeah, Bostic. I don't know what that is. Oh, is that the gun? Oh, the electric glue gun? Okay. Staple gun, nail gun, yep, all those gone. The gulag, Google gulag. Yes, indeed. F-O-I, I don't know about that. Uh, anyway, we're going to play some more music. <laughs> I know I'm rambling here. Because, <laughs> Lord, I was born a rambling man. Yes, indeed. So, uh, oh, here we go. All right, this is Queensryche. Blackfoot with Train Train there. That was a request for the Woodman, Meister Brow. Uh, yeah, when he, he took a little train trip from Washington on down to Arizona a couple, well, last week, I guess. And so somebody requested that for him, but uh, I, I hadn't played it till tonight, which is probably a good thing, because since he was not here last week to uh, listen to that song. <laughs> Anyway, uh, just before that, we heard Metallica uh, off of a fairly new uh, uh, posting up here, February 23rd. Uh, they did a, a, a concert in Turin, Italy on, on the 8th, uh, 10th of February uh, there, so uh, doing a Sanitarium, Welcome Home Sanitarium. And I noticed, and somebody mentioned here, Free and Slave mentioned there in the chat, and that, and that was uh, when it went, okay. He says he stopped listening to Metallica when they went on and on about bootlegging, which is when I did, but not so much because, well, definitely because of that. When, when they when they decided they needed to take down Napster, um, uh, be, because they put out two albums after the Black Album. They put out these two albums. One was called Load, and the other one was called Reload, and those albums sucked the big 
donkey dicks. They kicked, sucked the big donkey dicks in a, in a bad, bad way. Um, so when those albums weren't selling, they said, well, the reason our albums aren't selling is because because everybody's trading our songs free online. Not Instead of realizing, no, you're putting out shit, and nobody wants to buy shit. That's why your albums weren't selling. And now you'll notice, in the concerts that they do now, they're not playing anything off of those albums, because they know nobody liked that crap. <laughs> they're playing stuff, the old Metallica, when, when they were good, but before they lost their writing ability, apparently. So, um, yeah, so that, that's, I, I too, and I think most, many other, that Metallica lost a whole lot of fans, not only for what they did, with, with, they, they used to be so cool. You remember Garage Days, and they, they had these, they would, they would not sell a, a concert ticket for more than five bucks, and I mean, they would do all kinds of great, cool, fun stuff, and then they put out these shitty albums and nobody bought them, and they got pissed off and, and didn't want to blame themselves. Anyway, anyway, we we kicked off that set there with a song by a band, Queensryche, called Revolution Calling, a very forward-looking song which could apply to things going on in the world today. Absolutely, no doubt about it. So, uh, there's that. <laughs> now, Vincent Easley, I don't know if you're out there, if you're still listening in, he said to tell you when to call, but... I meant I PM'd you and, and I didn't see a reply to my PM. Uh, so maybe you're not. St maybe you fell asleep or uh, maybe your hands are full. <laughs> I, I, I don't really want to speculate on those kind of things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? He could be anywhere doing anything, and and uh, yeah. So that's uh, that's uh, something else completely. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Let me let me go back down here a little bit. See, see I I put a bunch. Of, see, I didn't know Moose Girl wasn't going to be here. As I as I don't know these things ahead of time. Uh, oft, oftenly, oftenly. <laughs> I don't often know. Uh, Blue Girl's not going to be here until just before the show. And so as I go through the week, when I'm putting my song requests in, I'll put in song requests that would more fit a Freaker's Ball type show with, you know, stuff that Moose Girl's going to like. So, so I have to go back into my older, some of my older stuff requests sometimes. And look up various tunages there, which is cool, which is fine. I have no problem doing that. I got, I, got, I mean, there's a ton of songs here in in my request list, so so I'm all good with that. But uh, just just let you know. <laughs> I don't even know why. Oh God. Okay. Uh, I I I. I I, is this the one I want to do? I'm looking at stories here. Moose's Merkin. What? Oh, yeah, this is the story I wanted to cover. Uh, some of y'all maybe saw the story earlier this week. I, I don't know. Um, maybe you saw it a year ago. It's possible. Because this story is from 2016. Either way, I still wanted to cover it. Um, just because... It, 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 uh, it's been a while, and I and I don't I didn't remember the story that well when I came across it, which is kind of surprising. I should have remembered the story very well, but I didn't. Anyway, this story is from June eighth, twenty sixteen, on the Free Thought Project dot com by Claire Burnish. Cops are now using a new device, allowing them to steal cash from innocent citizens like an ATM. Yes, indeed. As if civil, forfe a civil asset forfeiture, where police can steal your property without having to prove you did anything wrong whatsoever, uh, wasn't contentious enough already, a new device allows the Oklahoma Highway Patrol to steal money directly 
from your bank account on the spot. And it's already in use. And again, this was a year and a half ago. The electronic recovery and access to data machine known as ERAD. Oh, here's Vinny calling you in the middle of my story. <laughs> <laughs> too late, too late. Calling in, exactly. call in in the middle exactly. of my story. All right. You just hang on. I'm going to finish my story here. Okay. All right. So the, electro, the electronic recovery and access data machine, known as ERAD, can scan your bank account and prepaid cards, giving the Oklahoma Highway Patrol instant access to the balance and the funds. If a trooper believes, or wants to say he believes, that the money that you have, wherever it may be, is tied to a crime with no evidence whatsoever, they'll just steal your money directly out of your bank account. Oklahoma Highway Patrol rolled out 16 of these devices in May of 2016 and unsurprisingly has already employed the technology. <laughs> says, <laughs> says, you don't have to be charged with any crime to be a victim of these badged wearing armed robbers, which the OHP's new ERAD device is an astonishing prospect. We're going to look for different factors in the way that you're acting, Oklahoma Highway Patrol John Vincent told the news. We're, we're going to look for if there's a difference in your story, if there's some way, uh, some excuse we can use to steal your money, to say you're falsifying information about your business. When Vincent uh, seems to be saying is that the OHP will try its damnedest to find any possible excuse to steal your money, to rob you at gunpoint. If you can prove that you have a legitimate, prove that you have a reason to have money, <laughs> it will be given back to you after they've already stolen it and you've gone through severe processes. And we've done that in the past, Vincent added. Nice of you, Vincent. Um, <laughs> the uh, the reasoning what, me? <laughs> the reasoning turns the very concept of innocent until proven guilty on its head. And State Senator Kyle Loveless said cases where police abuse the new system have already come to light. Imagine that. And after only a month when this story was written, uh, they'd already abused the system, including single mothers, cancer survivor who had the, their medication seized, a Christian band. I, I, I don't want to trust them, and a number of others uh, that were just completely innocent people. We've seen where the money goes and how it's misspent, Loveless said. In fact, it's intensified policing for profit. <laughs> now, I don't have to read the rest of this story to y'all for you to know what's going on here. Uh, you, you, you see it going on in, in various ways throughout the, 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 the New World Order daily and, and getting worse, not, not getting better, getting worse. Uh, increasing as we go along, so uh, you just uh, bear in mind. This, uh, and this, this at the point this story was written was only Oklahoma. I imagine this is expanded by now. But let me say, if you're driving through Oklahoma, don't don't drive through Oklahoma. <laughs> as Grammy says, Oklahoma sucks. <laughs> anyway, how do you? Mr. I resent that. <laughs> I was born in T Town, you know. No, I did. You're you're a Tulsa boy. Yeah. No, I didn't sure know. Enough. I didn't know that. Yep, my mom was uh, from Oklahoma, and my dad was from Arkansas, from the hills. Dang, you got redneck both sides. By golly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, my my mom thought she was marrying somebody really rich. A couple of her girlfriends, you know, they all put a pack together. Said Dad's going to all marry some big old uh, tycoon. And uh, got together some years later at the reunion, and one gal showed up in a big old Cadillac and furs and jewelry and said she'd married a cattle king down in Texas. And the other one, she married an oil king down in Texas, and y'all decked out as well. And there my mom rolled up in the broke-down Pontiac with a bunch of kids piling out, and they said, well, what happened to you? She said, well, I married me a fur uh, a king, too. She said, I married me a furky narky. <laughs> Oh, so I come off I come off the desert today after 
28 days out there. And, uh, so I'm, uh, Sheriff Vinny, uh, retired now. Uh, I only had to do, uh, well, actually I say one was my first, but actually, uh, had a little kid there, uh, the other day, throw a rock at the building, pick something up, and uh, I got onto him. And a little punk kid, probably eight or nine years old, looked at me like, uh, who do you think you are telling me something? And his mama says, you know better than that. I says, well, we ain't got no jail. And I thought later, you know, it was like, well, it would have been funny. I said, if I'd have said, you know, wait a minute, you know, no, no, I guess we couldn't hang him for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, of course, I thought of it too late. Now, so yesterday, this guy and a girl come down to pick up truck and mattress and what all in there and went out there and back and uh, dumped it out. So uh, I was trying to get around there on there on them and they come whipping out. And I, I was running out there in the sunlight and couldn't quite get my camera turned on. It, uh, I act like I took a picture of their plate because uh, he wasn't going to stop for me and he. Uh, Peeling, you know, peeling, spinning his tires, spinning gravel. And so I held my phone up there and he's looking in the mirror and he stopped, got out. You know, when I, when I was fixing to stop him, I said, you know, I'm liable to be taking me an ass whooping here. We'll, we'll see what happens. You know, you can't come in here, uh, dirtying up my town and, uh, you know, being sheriff and all. So, uh, he stops and he comes back there and he's all like, I see you had your fart, smartphone there. Well, it wasn't so smart, but I was a little smarter than it and him, so I tricked them both. And anyways, I said, uh, uh, you need to go back there and pick that uh, trash up, you don't. He said, oh, I thought it was okay. You know, people said that's where you come. I said, well, uh, I don't know about that, but this ain't the, this ain't a dump. I said, they come in here with a bulldozer and cleaned up a bunch of this other stuff. And so I, I didn't get the town cleaned up. Now, I'm really disappointed about that. But uh, it, it was just a little bit more than what I had to do, and uh, partly because I'm uh, lazy and spent a lot of time sitting down and moving between the shade and the sunshine and staying warm and staying cool, but, and then gathering wood and boiling water and, and cooking and this and that. But it, it was a wonderful time. So 28 days and 11 days the first time. It could have been uh, uh, near 40s, but actually 39, so... Um, all, all good numbers if you're into numerology. I, I really like that. Three times nine is 27, and that breaks down to nine, which is my power number. So that's uh, that's good. It's told them the 39 days. Uh, 28 is what a, a lunar cycle, and 11's got to mean something. I don't know what, but hey, one more. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> mean uh, something. A numerologist. Yeah, somebody would know. But anyways, I love it. You know what? I talked to a lot, a lot of folks. And uh, I couldn't get but one person to say, all I can say is I disagree with you. Uh, one guy told me, he said, you know, I've learned more from you in five minutes than I have of all this time of mainstream media. And uh, pretty proud. Now, today, I uh, left out early this morning, pretty pretty early, and friends come pick me up. We went to uh, the Virgin Valley Heritage Museum in Mesquite, and uh, a couple of ladies in there. One, hey, Mary B., she's from... Uh, New Zealand. Let me get her card here and I'll tell you her name. She's a white lady. She's not uh, Maori, but uh, she did know a few uh, words where, where, in the language I used at? on her. Else, uh, I was in Riverside, California. No, no, where, California, where are you Nevada. at now? Oh, I'm back in Vegas uh, at my cousin's. Huh? And I'm headed to Denver in the morning. So I'm doing all my laundry and washing all my bedding and repacking. And I'm not going to be able to travel as heavy as I did this time. Uh, Remember, you guys remember the, uh, the shofar guy, the guy that blows the horn at the courthouse, uh, and back all the way back into the Bundy right. Ranch yeah, days sure. in 2014. Yeah, that's Brand Thornton. So we're going to Denver. He told me the guy's name, but I didn't quite catch it. So, uh, I'm going to go a couple of weeks before I head down to Arkansas for a month. And, uh, so we're headed to Denver in the morning. And, uh, so I'll be up probably most of the night, um, uh, repacking and sorting. And I'm going to have to, uh, get rid of stuff as, all I can say, uh, I've got way too much stuff to be tucking around. You taking a bus out there? No, we're driving. All right. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, oh boy, uh, he says, "Well, I'll go, cl- I'll go pick it up." And he says, "Uh, you know, that's a five hundred dollar mattress. Would you like to have it?" I said, "No, I don't reckon I need it." And I'm thinking, "Why? Why are you gonna, you know, if it's a five hundred dollar mattress, why are you dumping out in the desert?" But uh, Anyways, I says, uh, I tell you what, I said, I'll give you $20 for a ride to 
dispensary in the skeeting back and uh he's all like oh hello man my wife would freak out about that and uh yeah i've been afterwards after the fact i'm thinking later i should have said you know oh she's uh she's okay with you dumping uh, garbage out in the desert on somebody else's land in, in uh, a historic location like like this um but not okay with uh with the plant yeah so yeah, I ended up there today anyway. So I, I found when I, yeah, now I didn't have too much weed throughout, but I did, uh, oh, what I, I started out with three grams and, uh, headed into town one time. It's a wild Apache Indian, a friend of mine that I met in 2014. He come by and picked me up one time, took me to town, and so I got me a gram then. That didn't last very long. That was, uh, some goat roper weed. I forget what it was. This, what I got today is, uh, lemon, uh, old school lemon. And I smoked that stuff, you know, out in the parking lot of a store and went in to use the bathroom and I'm all like, man, I ain't even high. And I, I was coming out of the bathroom. I'm like, I'm high as hell. This is <laughs> yeah. I, I, I did a lot more work when I had weed. When I, when I didn't, you know, I, it's some of the best medicine. They, they'll give me, uh, you know, some states you can go and you can get these opiates and morphine and all this and that, you know, and, uh, get put in prison for having a plant, you know? Yeah. So big pharma. Uh, I had learned, uh, some history of the, the place. And then, uh, talking to those ladies at the, uh, at the, uh, uh, museum, I learned a lot more. And, um, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm trying to, uh, find, find the website, this, uh, certain section there. But anyways, uh, I'm trying to catch up here and Facebook and all that. I ain't even made it to Twitter. And, I spent a first day, I spent a half a day with Cliven and then he had somebody coming at one. So we had beans, <clears throat> excuse me, and, uh, uh, some Bundy beef. And then a couple of days ago, I spent, uh, a uh, whole day with him. Got over about, oh, what, nine o'clock. And now it was closer to eight because I started out early and, uh, Ryan Bundy was uh, coming by and I hitched a ride with him and his uh, daughter. And they gave me a ride down there. So I got down there and, Plugged all my stuff in. Now, I'm amazed at how far my power supply went. But my cousin had given me a bunch of uh, double A, a packs of double A's, and they would give me a full charge on the phone. But uh, then this external pack I got, uh, I think it'd give me three, four, or five charges. And I had a solar charger that that wild engine gave me. And the daggum thing quit working as soon as you give it to me. So, <laughs> hey, there's Judge Dredd. Hold on just a second. Okay, I, that's pretty rude to suck snot on air. I was yeah. watching an old video of uh, uh, Mad Dog that uh, I think she's goblin semen on on uh, Twitter, but she was sure <laughs> snucking, sucking snot and swallowing it. Sure enough, on the uh, video, she said that uh, uh, that was up in Malheur. Now she was on, uh, she was FBI informant, and she's the one who ratted out Tom Lockevar Stewart, the Resurrect the Republic, my good friend, who I'm a correspondent for. And I got him hooked up with Cliven for an inter- interview. I haven't watched it. I had to, you know, baby my power and stuff. But uh, so we rode around, Cliven and I, and uh, I sat in the back seat of his, uh, and he took his wife's four wheel drive, like a blazer or whatever it is, anyways. And we had a photographer, so he'd got there early and had breakfast and all at about six thirty in the morning. And uh, I had leftover bre- uh, biscuits for lunch later on. So the second second meal wasn't as good but i didn't sing i didn't sing for him the second time like i did the first one now did you play my video while i was off and running around there real bravo that i put in request for not yet or, okay good maybe you can play that when when, when you roll out or whatever so i sang uh i sang a, just a verse of it and and i think it really hit him too you know and uh the reverence about, you know, him coming home. So is what I'd sung was, uh, what, one of the verses was, uh, gonna hang my sombrero. I'm not doing a good job. I kind of hoarse, but I think I did a much better job in person. He kind of looked at me and I'm wondering, I'm, I'm interpreting his expression. I, I was like, you know, it could be that, uh, this is really touching his heart. You know, he's come home. Uh, the words are coming, going to hang my hat on. My sombrero, let me try again. Gonna hang my sombrero on a limb. Uh, coming home, sweetheart, daughter, and just my rifle, my pony, and me. 
uh, sung by Dean Martin and uh, I think it's Rio Bravo with uh, what John Wayne and uh, Ricky Nelson, Walter Brennan. Of course, uh, I'm a big John Walter Wayne fan. Brennan. Now, John Wayne supposedly slept, slept there, him and, and other actors, back after the World War II when they were shooting movies up in Utah. Stayed in this. It's the Rio uh, Virgin Motel. Now, the ladies there at the museum told me that that was up Beaver Dam. They'd come in out of Vegas and they'd just rent the whole town and close it up and bring so, uh, so wait, let me, let, let, me let me let me just get this straight. Uh huh. At the Beaver Dam. <laughs> yeah. Beaver Dam. They had wild, <laughs> wild parties. Yeah, yeah. Show girls. Yeah, you had it was show girls and you had the Virgin Motel. Yeah, but that's down in Riverside, so uh, Beaver was on up a little bit. Yeah, started down there. At, uh, uh, it's off uh, Virgin Mountain. Is there? They call it Virgin Hill, and there's a road that goes up there, Virgin Virgin Road. <laughs> uh, uh, Coincidentally uh, enough, but uh, then uh, on up through the. Well, now, now you were in a ghost town. Mm-hmm. And there were no ghosts. No, you know. I, I, the second night I was out there, and, it, and it, this is such a, a good example of what a different world we live in. Um, so about the second night I got there, so it had been about 26 days ago, uh, these teenagers, they stopped up there on top of the hill, and uh, uh, a whole bunch of them, boys and girls, telling you know, they're pretty young, uh, 14 to 16, I reckon. And uh, one of these girls, I, it's just it's a dark, dark night, too, you know, wasn't eating any moon out, and did I hear this scream? And I go, what the hell? And then uh, it didn't take me long to figure it out. And it was more of a, 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 a testing scream. You know, I'm like listening. I go, uh, I wonder if she's kind of getting took advantage of. So I listen and uh, think, let's see what I'm going to need to do here. And then I hear the inflection in, in it. And it was more like, like I said, a testing scream. Is there any ghost down there? Ah! And... Uh, so anyways, they, they build up their courage and they work their way down and, uh, they're poking around. I'm like, uh, I just set up in a building I'd cleaned up, uh, before I set my tent up. And so they're poking around. I'm like, crap, you know, they're going to really freak out. And in this day and age, you know, there's like, wow, some old hobos down here and, uh, probably a child molester and all this and that, you know, I'm just imagine all the scenarios that they're freaking <laughs> out and calling the law. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. But in, 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 in the old days, I would have been like, oh, man, I'm fixing a mess with these people. I'd have been making ghost sounds and uh, sneaking around and throwing stuff and scared the crap out of them. But, uh, yes, this is me, Judge Dredd, on the radio, Hansel. So, so you got, you got, uh, I am back. You have a ghost town with no ghosts, a, a virgin hotel with no virgins, and a mm -hmm. beaver dam with no beavers. Yeah, that was all, you know, all in the past. No beaver. I did drink, uh, yeah. <laughs> There's actually beavers somewhere in that river. And uh, now back in the 80s, I worked in Mesquite. And uh, I actually, down in Glendale as well. And Mer met my first love there. Uh, and that was so cool. What a name, too. S-O-K-O-L. So cool. It's so cool. And uh reconnected with her back in 2011. Spent a little time with her up in uh St. George, Utah. Anyways, uh, where the Virgin River goes, or the 15 goes over the Virgin River, it's about 100 foot off there. And uh, I guess I was 18 or 19 at the time. First time I ever repelled off of that uh, bridge down the river. And alongside the interstate, uh, there's a mineral springs that flows down there and overflows, and it's uh, sandbagged and uh, little pools built up. It's like the, the mineral deposits built up, and it's like, um, if you imagine what a stalactite or stalagmite might look like, that same type of uh, mineralization, you know, build up that mm -hmm. huge, huge, huge waterfall series uh, flowing down first it kind of gently, and then at the very end, just off in a sharp waterfall off into a pool, and then uh, you know being sandbagged, and then off into the river. Um, yeah, we used to hang out down there, and uh, a lot of people would and. Uh, People trashed it up, and then, you know, there's organized from Beaver Dam just up the road in a little field there, uh, clean up, you know, clean up glass and trash and stuff, which I was doing there at the uh, the Virgin uh, River Motel, the Rio Virgin. Um, 
picked up a lot of trash and um, cleaned out some of the buildings and tried to pick up and preserve some of the uh, um, artifacts and set them back up on shelves. Somebody just trashed it and broke stuff. Oh, man, I, I just don't understand why people would do that, you know. So I left a couple of signs that uh, one says, uh, uh, no dumping, please uh, uh, preserve our, our land and our history. And uh, I left another sign, nailed it to one of the, the buildings, and it says, uh, look, touch, please do not take, do not break. So um, what about the other, that was what, my... What about, what about the other sign that was up there that said, post no signs? Yeah, that was posted by Bill, and uh, it said, post no bills, and signed <laughs> Bill. But, huh, huh. Uh, but anyways, that was my last, last act of uh, as uh, self-appointed sheriff of Riverside, Nevada, the ghost town. Now, the guy, and I've got a picture, and i got a lot of history, so um, I'll be working all this up and bringing it to uh, to Google Maps. And, and uh, there's a lot of information, it turns out, that you can't find because uh, – uh, the stupid algorithms and Google. So when you look the place up, it comes up as a ghost town. Now this guy here, and I uh, can't call his name offhand. I have to look at my notes. Um, but anyways, he uh, he's the one who kind of started this rumor of it uh, being a ghost town. But the buildings were built in the 1920s, and uh, as a motor hotel. And like I said, John Wayne. Now the, the women said that they all stayed up there in Beaver Dam, but she's talking about probably more towards this. But she did not account for um, the 40s when the war was going on and after, and, you know, the, the propaganda films, the war films, and the, the westerns, and, you know, John Wayne, and all that stuff they're shooting up there in Utah and all that beautiful country up there. So that would be a natural stop-off point. And Cliven had told me that uh, uh, that that very fact there. <clears throat> so they, she said, uh, well, maybe they did or maybe they didn't, but, you know, the information they had. But when I left there, I was thanking them for all the great information. And, and uh, they said, you know, we learned some things from you. Um, and plus, the one, another guy that worked there, he was all trying to tell me about Clyde the Camel, um, said was in Glendale. And that I worked there uh, back when I was a teenager. Boy, I got some stories, too. Uh, and like I said, where I met my first love. He's, he thought the camel was in Glendale. I said, no, it was in Arrowhead, which is like just a mile up the road. But there is a difference between Glendale and Arrowhead. So Clyde, I think he died in 1995. He was a camel. And most camels are assholes. You know, they'll spit on you and bite you. You know, llamas the same way. Uh, but Clyde was cool, man. And he was our friend. I was about 18, 19 at the time living out there. And uh, uh, we'd go party. Me and my friends would uh, we'd go up there and drink beer with him. He loved beer. He drink tequila. Anything we had, he'd, he'd drink hard alcohol. And it was real cool. It was like, you know, he'd be like, man, I'm so glad you guys come up here and party with me. You know, I'm locked in this little pen. You know, I ain't no bigger, hardly, maybe the double the size of a two car garage. You know, mm-hmm. a big old uh, chain link fence around him. About I don't know, eight, six or eight foot tall, or whatever it was, but. All alone, so he really appreciated the company. And hell, if I was, uh, if I was locked up, I'd be damn proud of somebody come by and got me drunk, you know. Now, but, now, uh, why, I don't know why, if he ever got was too this, Why was this camel out there in the middle of nowhere locked up? Who, who's taking care of it? Well, it was uh, it was an attraction, you know. And at Glendale, they had buffalo, and just up the road there, it was Indians that owned that the Arrowhead store and gas station. And uh, he was outside there across the street there in a a pen, you know, for people to come gawk at, you know, and uh, so we didn't gawk at him. We we as friends and and partied with him, treated him like a you know an equal, and uh, we we didn't care if he bogarted or anything else, you know, guzzled down uh, more more than his share. But he liked to drink. He sure did. So I give him some good stories on that, and uh, they're very interested in my uh, my. Uh, Real Liberty Media reporter uh, placard, my laminated piece of paper is what I call it. Um, they they took a photocopy of that. So I have a big one, a full-size sheet. Um, and that's what I showed to people. And I that way you can just take a picture of it instead of the small one that ra- hangs around my neck and you got to write all that down. Um, I said, yeah, uh, follow along, check this out here. And um, So that I had a lot of people engaged, a lot of people in conversation. A few people didn't know uh, 
any of what happened with uh, Clive and Bundy, but uh, they were they were well educated when they left. Um, they come to find out the the lies about the uh, tortoise and this extreme environmentalism, which uh, the the reporter that was along with us the other day. Actually, I was more like along with them as I was sitting in the back seat, and he kind of got preferential treatment. And I'm like, I've told these people, you know, the Bundys, Ryan, Ammon, uh, Cliven, uh, Mrs. Bundy, uh, and a bunch of other people, you know. You know, the time for trust is over. You know, trust in these people, you see where that got you, and, and especially media. I said, I'm not asking for any any trust. I want full scrutiny, full eyes, and full judgment. I said, uh, and thank you, Hal. I said, I'm not a bit transparent. I said, transparency is a, is a camouflage. You see through, you don't see in. So I'm wide open. I, and you remember I, I did that uh, 30 minutes there about with y'all and talked about, uh, you know, my past and uh, being a bad boy and this and that and uh, all that. So to uh, to be able to share with them, that way, you know, if I got up there on the witness stand, I would they wouldn't be all like, ah, oh, crap, what are, who, who's this guy, you know? Uh, you know, been in prison, this and that. So I, I want to be completely open, honest, and, and to be judged because I'm judged. You know that what the Bible says: "Judge not, lest you be judged." But more, more of what it says: "As you judge, so shall you be judged." So I judge, and I and I uh, I confronted. I hadn't been very very long, and it put a real big rift uh, at the beginning of the trial between me and the the main supporters out there. But, uh, oh, Goblin Seaman, the mad dog Melissa, the, uh, the federal, uh, snitch, the su- su- a snot sucker herself, uh, which reminds me, you know, the difference between liking and loving is spitting and swallowing. And she swallowed it down. Now she says on Goblin Seaman, she chooses up, spits them out, never swallows it. I saw her swallow. I sure did. Uh, so anyways. I make a big confrontation because she came out and uh, made some accusations and their response had they just said nothing and uh, like Kelly did uh, later on then uh, you know they would have been fine but their their response was very weak and it looked suspicious uh, uh, there's a better word than suspicious but uh, anyway so I asked them I said uh, you know what's up with this because I didn't believe the accusations of theft of uh, or embezzlement of uh, you know donations, and they evidence to me uh, very well uh, photo, uh, photographic evidence uh, links to uh, uh, other, uh, financial records and and so forth. So I judged them, and and you know I said you know I want to know uh, you know is this true? And they proved to me that it was there was no proof or uh, nothing to the allegations, anyways. But I did not. Uh, uh, respond publicly because they did not want to engage these people uh, to give them, you know, any of their uh, energy directing that. And, and you know, that's a, a real big movement to, uh, you know, discredit people. Like this uh, one guy, Sir Reeves or something, I met them over in uh, the Oregonian chat uh, back last fall during the trial. Hold on, Hans, I'll catch up with you in a minute there. Um, but uh, Sir Reeves was uh, probably the the most patient and kindness, uh, kindest, uh, um, kind of gentlest about how they dealt with the kind of low level. Okay, you um, keep talking. I'll be right back. Uh, logical fallacy. Okay, and, and so anyway, he's come over and got me on Twitter yesterday or something else. So, uh, uh, if you claim to be uh, a reporter, well. What do you mean, claim to be a reporter? You know, maybe you better look up to see what reporter is. I haven't responded to him yet. Um, obviously, I'm recording right now. I, I, and I've, I've said before, you know, I don't possess the, the skills or the resources that uh, some of these big people in mainstream media, but at least uh, I wasn't in a Turkish prison. Now, you're thinking of uh, your your escape there, uh, Midnight, what was it, uh, the Midnight Express? Yeah, Hansen, you know, yeah. But anyway, so where was I? Uh, uh, yeah, the mainstream media, maybe called the uh, in this alleging or referring to myself as media. 
yeah, I, I'm not great. You know, my grammar sucks. My spelling's pretty bad, and, and I have a hard time reading my own handwriting. But I'll tell you what, uh, I am honest and sincere, and I don't go spreading lies like uh, you yay hoes do. And uh, I, I called them out and pinned them up in the elevator. So, um, yeah, I've spent a lot of time in, in this since 2014, and I would say I'm a, an expert on the matter, on the on the subject of the Bundy Ranch. Now, less so on the uh, Oregon uh, up at the Malheur, which became the Harney County Resource Center, formerly known as the uh, Malheur Refuge Wildlife Center. But anyways, uh, you know, I've got friends that, that I knew in Bunkerville. Uh, Jason Patrick looks like he, he's going to get out April 1st. Uh, great, great man, Jason Patrick. And uh, Tom like of our steward, he's in a halfway house. Should be getting uh, released out of there pretty pretty soon. We're hoping he got his YouTube channel knocked off too for the interview. Um, he asked me to get Cliven's number for him. But, uh, Cliven Bundy knew him way better than me. Yeah, I only talked to Cliven one time in 2014. I didn't try to impose myself upon these people and didn't do it this time either. You know, I spent 11 days down there and never talked to anybody and um, was what good two weeks or something in before uh, um, I got with uh, got with the Bundys and went up to visit in the uh, you know, good folks, real good folks. And I get a lot of people wanting their time. So I, I'm not one to, you know, be like like when I was recording at the courthouse. Everybody swarmed them. I stayed back. You'll see my videos where I let everybody do their vulturing, and then uh, I wait for appropriate uh, time. And they've all given so much of their time. And uh, Now, since this is us here, I'll go ahead and say a few things that uh, – I'll otherwise not share. Now, Clancy, he's uh, married to Cliven's youngest daughter, and uh, he, he's a, a short in statue, but uh, 10 foot tall, and uh, I'll tell you what, he's uh, uh, got a heart of gold, tough, tough as nails, and working him cattle. Um, so he told me a few things. Yeah, I had to, he had to take uh, shots, hormone shots, like he had a growth problem when he was little, and he's still short, but He's just tall enough to reach up there and grab the handle of that and shoot and working them uh, wild cattle. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I've worked cattle. I've got uh, – I, I can get references for those that uh, think that I just dress up and play cowboy. Uh, but I worked cow, cattle back in Arkansas and in Texas. And uh, uh, <clears throat> so this one, one of my trolls said, oh, look, Vinny's dressed up like a cowboy. Remember – I think you'll remember that. Yeah, now. I do remember but that. Anyway, yeah. So now – the hardest cow I ever come up with was old mama, uh, Charlotte, and she knew she was going to the slaughterhouse, and she was fighting out her heart out to, uh, you know, not to be taken down. And and it really lends a lot of credit to the uh, sentiency of animals. You know, they know. They they really do. Um, and I used to be a vegetarian and, and really uh, kind of feel guilty still now being a meat eater again. And I, I'll be a... Uh, uh, vegetarian again one day. But anyway, so these cows are tough. Now they're, uh, uh Bradford, Bradford, I believe, or Brayford, uh, which is now that there's different kind of how you, you get the exact name, how the bloodline, but first generation, uh, is Brahma and, uh, the Hereford. So, uh, real tough cows now and, and out there running. There's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of square miles of cattle run. Um, and we went uh, the last time, too. So we started out, we went way up the, uh, and crossed the, oh, so much stories to tell here, crossed the uh, Spanish Trail, which um, was actually more of a corridor than today, and became Highway 91, which was an old uh, wagon road. That one where we crossed was, and at very different places depending on the time of year, and then became Highway 91, which goes from uh, Montana to Santa Monica. Um, and, oh, perfect. Who will build the roads? I, I've got to stand up and walk over here and look at this man. This name C.H. Uh, Bigelow is his name. That's what it is. He was a one-legged man, believe it or not. So back in, uh, yeah, I don't know if he was ever in an ass-kicking contest, but... Uh, he was a busy fella. Who will build the roads? This man went from community to community, from uh, Searchlight, Nevada, on up to uh, 
uh, into Utah and stuff, encouraged local communities to improve uh, their sections of road between each other. So who will build the roads? Well, when you when you have a need, I mean, hey, if you wanted to go to town uh, and you'd say, well, damn, there's a rock in the road. I believe I'll stop and move that rock out. Well, you know, that's just a small end start. So in 1915 and 16, uh, AAA wanted to, to prove that you could drive a vehicle between L.A. and Salt Lake City. So uh, uh, in 1914, he'd, uh, he'd kind of started preliminarily uh, getting these people to, you know, kind of improve up some of the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was called the Arrowhead Trail then, which uh, became uh, State Highway 91, which was replaced by Interstate 15. Uh, and and there's lots and lots of history, and I've uh, got a lot to write. And I'll probably have to get with somebody, maybe uh, uh, Kate, or when I get back to Arkansas, my friend there, she's a writer. And uh, is what I figure I'll do. I'll just make one humongous run-on sentence like I'm talking now and get somebody to come in and help me with my uh, diction. <laughs> so anyways, who will build the roads? People will. And C.H. Bigelow, he helped to uh, to do that. Uh, now, the Spanish Trail was a, a corridor, and it changed routes. It was a, a Spanish, uh, uh, you know, they traveled throughout the West, and it was a, a mule, a pack mule trails, and it, and it shifted depending on the time of year. Now, back in the 80s, uh, Meadow Valley Wash, which is uh, uh, above the reservation, the Moapa Paiute Reservation, and uh, goes up towards northern Utah, or I mean Nevada, uh, the Meadow Valley Wash, I found... Well, you know, they other people had seen them, obviously, for many years, but there were hieroglyphs there, and they showed the uh, Spaniards with, you know, with their hand, their helmets, you know, the Spanish uh, metal helmet and the uh, two-wheeled uh, carts. Right. There's a lot of talk about the uh, – am I running into me too much time? We doing good? Uh, well, yeah, I, I mean, you know, um, we could – We uh, could take get, a break. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah. like. Play, play some tunes here let, and then... Uh... Okay, let me tell you this, and then I'll shut up for a little bit and take a swallow of water and get back over here to chat. Yeah, so I see these hieroglyphs. Um, Lost City Museum, the uh, Perkins, I think, which his name was, a curator. He's an old man when I was young, and, you know, he was surprised at some of the hieroglyphs. So I've been all over that country. It's not like I'm some uh, somebody that showed up for fame and glory. My mother and grandmother lived there in Moapa Valley, you know, instead of first love there, worked in Mesquite. Uh, we played against them boys up there in football, and, you know, they were all like 10 foot tall. And anyways, uh, uh, let me uh, let me take a pause, and uh, we'll listen to some music, and, and I'll mute up. And if you want me to uh, come back, I've got a lot more to talk about. You always do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool, man. I, I'm you. reporting. Now, this is this is my credibility. Is this not a report? Oh, I got so much to say. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. just uh, just uh, hang, hang steady there, and uh, we'll play some music and come back. All righty. So this is uh, I don't know what this is. Real Bravo. The sun is sinking in the west. The Yeah, Trump, you asshole, give me back my bullets. <laughs> That's Leonard Skinner there for uh, free and slave with give me back my bullets. Um, and before that, we had Government Mule doing an awesome version of War Pigs. And we kicked it off with something real bravo, my rifle, my pony, and me, Cindy. I, I, don't, I don't know, something from a movie called Rio Bravo uh, that Vinny requested. So, uh, there's that. <laughs> Still there, Vinny? I am, and uh, I'm multitasking. So, sorry about that. I right. should have been there in chat. Uh, packing up, getting ready to go to Denver in the morning. Yeah. How long are you going to be up in Denver? Well, the, the trial is expected to to take up to four months. I'll be there for a couple of weeks and then uh, headed down to Arkansas, uh, be there for a month, 
I'm going to do some house setting and dog setting for some friends. So you're going to be in one uh, place for four weeks and another place for a month. Well, no, a couple of weeks in Denver, then oh, down okay. to Arkansas for probably a, four weeks. And then uh, I got a wedding the 28th down in uh, Texas. My cousin's boy getting married. Uh, also, and this is just for us here at Real Liberty Media. Well, you know, a, you know, a, this podcast not, goes worldwide, so. Yes, it does. But uh, um, if you're fortunate enough to be listening here, you're going to be privy to uh, some information that others are not going to have. And uh, I did say it publicly in a comment, and uh, so I, I was sent a message to, to hush. But uh, I'll be going down to uh, Waco um, about the same time, end of April, interviewing the uh, 11 survivors, survivors from the Waco fire. All right, so uh, uh, April 19th is the uh, the day. Yes. Yeah, I was married on the 17th of April and uh, was on my way back from uh, Vegas and stopped off in Flagstaff. First time i ever seen a color photograph on the headline uh, of a newspaper, and it was USA Today, and it was the uh, um, it was the building there that had been set on fire. Now, a lot of people suppose that they burned themselves down, but, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time investigating this also and seeing a lot of the uh, video evidence that uh, they those tanks uh, that were, pumping that tear gas in there, ignited those fires. And uh, matter of fact, they par- parked on top of the uh, the bunker door, you know, trapping the women and children down in there. Right. And some of the people fleeing out the back door were gunned down. You know, that's all that's all shown. It's, it's video evidence. So I got trolled on one of my uh, links there by a, an actual uh, distant cousin over in New Mexico easily. You can always tell when somebody's liberal and they're, they're biased. Which leads up to Cliven Bundy and uh, this re- uh, photograph, the photographer riding around uh, with us, or I was actually riding with him because he had first owner there up front there and had the breakfast, and I had leftover biscuits for lunch, damn it, that day. But he, anyways, uh, well, you want for guy, but you know, go ahead. <laughs> what do you want for nothing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, yeah. you, you don't I want it. it all. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm a fat man trapped in a skinny man's body, and don't tease me about food. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> you know, you don't get the little the little reference there to the Blues Brothers, but that's all right. Wait a minute. Tell me again. Maybe I did miss it. So what do you want okay, for yeah. nothing? Uh, that's Rub been a, a long biscuit. time since I've seen that movie. Rub a biscuit. <laughs> Rub a biscuit. That was a long time ago. Yeah, I haven't seen yeah, that. Yeah, but you really. remember that song? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rubber biscuit? Yeah, look uh, it up. Yeah, when you get, it, when you get around later. You guys, yeah, we'll do that for <laughs> sure. Did you guys see my roommate? She, she was my roommate, and then I moved out, moved into my tent, and left. Uh, I did not see your around. roommate. Where, how was I going to see your roommate? I posted the video. I actually uh, did the uh, um, copy from oh, uh, my Oh, yeah, I saw that video. That was your roommate? Yeah, she's beautiful. That's fluffy. Yeah. So anyways, uh, my second day out, well, my first day with Cliven, uh, his youngest daughter says, oh, I'm sorry, I'll get out of here. You're all going to do an interview. I said, no, I'm not not here to do an interview. I'm here to visit and pay my respects. You know, uh, I, I could have put up a live video on, on Facebook, and it would have probably, you know, uh, being how everybody's starved for, for uh, you know, since the trial's over, they're starved for this more Bundy information than this. And I, I could have had, you know, 10,000 views. But um, if you don't know, uh, I'm not about fame, popularity, or numbers. And uh, when I started in the radio be five years ago in May, um, I, I was quickly dismayed by the low numbers. So um, I come to find out if I want to worry about numbers, then I might as well just quit. So, no, if you, if you want numbers, it, it's it's really easy to get them. And it would, but, but basically, you got to talk about bullshit. You got to talk right. about some celebrity crap, some TV show bullshit, uh, tantalizing nudity or sex stuff, and you'll get numbers. You'll get numbers at the wazoo. But yeah. what, what, at what price? You're selling your soul to, to get a fucking number, man. Uh, screw that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not about that. 
and I'm not about the sensation or uh, you know headlines or uh, you know trying to get the scoop. You know when I when I told the told the Mrs. Bundy I'd be headed out to uh, you know make a stay out there. She's all like, oh, you're going to be reporting on our comings and goings? Nope. You know, and it goes back into to my saying, uh, uh, don't trust, you know, uh, especially anybody in media. I ain't asking nobody for trust. I don't want any inside information. And uh, I actually have some uh, advice uh, for the Bundys. And, uh, and and this is for everybody. You know, you, you go to run in your mouth. You, you need to guard your words. And I'm not saying they're running their mouth. That, a lot of people run their mouth talking about this and that. Um, guard your words. And especially when you have people that are, are certainly enemies to you. Now, this guy, uh, he's a snowflake. Um, he got pinned down. Now, he was saying, now, to be <laughs> fair, you guys had a lot of guns pointing back at the feds because we we're talking about the, uh, you know, the, the raid on the, the Bundy Ranch. And, and they was definitely there to kill him, just like they did those people in Waco. Just like that. And the same people involved in Waco, Ruby Ridge, and the uh, I believe I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, all these same people uh, was out here and involved in the Bundy Ranch, I think. Sure. Uh, in a, so, you know, we, we see what we got. We got thugs. We, we've got crimes of the state. There's a hashtag I've been using a lot, crimes of the state. Um, dirty, dirty deeds, man. When, when people look back in history and think about, uh, you know, the supposed history of Nazi Germany and all, all that, that entails, um, you know, people say, well, I didn't say anybody do anything. Why didn't anybody say anything? How did it come to this? Well, uh, I'm here now because this is where we're headed. You, you know, we, people think that we were, won World War II. Uh, we brought the Nazis here and incorporated into, uh, you know, from the OSS into the CIA and the FBI. And we got all these other bureaucracies. And, uh, you know, so the, the stormtroopers, the Nazis, the, uh, um, the Gestapo. Yeah, well, Paperclip we brought, a, brought oh. over a bunch of them. So. Say it again? So Paperclip brought over a bunch of them. Yeah, right? right. Well, I mean, we're we're way, we're well on our way to uh, rounding people up. We're already doing it. Locking people up. Look what they did to the Bundys and, and the supporters. You know, the oh, picture you remember of that, Eric Parker. Remember that, uh, that black site up there in Chicago? Now... There, there was some little hubbub about it for a while, but it's gone away. But but the, the black side's still there. They're still locking people up. Uh, un, you know, people they just grab people that they want to grab, throw them in there. Those people got no rights, no say. You get no lawyers. You get no charges against them. They're, they're, it's it's just uh, indefinite detention going on, and that's all right. allowed via the NDAA from 2012 and on. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean... <laughs> you don't think that's that's going on here in the, in this country? Well, wake up! <laughs> yeah, it's happening. You know, Clive and Bundy spent seven hundred days. That I think that's pretty significant number, seven hundred. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I'm a I'm a man that prays, and uh, you know, my relationship with God. I ain't trying to evangelize nobody, but. Uh, um, uh, I, I'm very, very happy preacher. with. Well, okay. Uh, matter is, is vibration, you know, and, and uh, the Bible says that God spoke and it became into being. So you know, everything is in vibration. We got our, these frequencies, and you know that they screw with our frequency for the natural uh, hertz, you know, um, even to the wall sockets, the uh, um, 65 hertz, I think it is, and if that's right. Yeah, 50 to 65, I believe it is. And, but all this stuff really screws with us. Uh, and that's why I like to go out into the desert and uh, get down on the ground and get grounded, you know, um, bring your energy back. But for me, I, man, so much of my life for so long was so much disarray, you know, getting in trouble at 15 years old and, uh, you know, spent half my life dealing with uh, parole, probation or uh, in or out of jail and prison and, uh, four years on the lamb. So uh, I have been living where my, my life, I'm in tune with the universe. The frequency is so awesome for me. You know, it's like uh, life is great, and it's even better with weed, by the way. 
cannabis can. That's what I think. But anyway, so for me, I, I'm pretty stubborn and I need, you know, evidence. So uh, I, I say uh, to God, I said, prepare my path. And he knows that I have to have indicators that, that uh, where I know I'm obviously on track. Now, let's see if I've got this here. Uh, I do. But I can call it off the uh, top of my head. I, I don't remember where it is. It's somewhere else. So I pick up uh, uh, two or three weeks ago a, a random single page of a book that's blowing around outside the uh, ghost town. And uh, I go to reading it. And I'm just amazed. Hey, it's kind of a fantasy sci-fi, but in it they're talking about uh, being camped outside of a ghost town. I said, yeah, that's pretty neat. And I wasn't a bit surprised because, you know, uh, signs and wonders are presented for me to, to know that I'm on the right track, let's say. So anyways, uh, as I'm cleaning up one of these uh, motel rooms there that's been trashed, I pick up another single page of a book just randomly and, I said this right here, and I set it aside and uh, to read later. And also I found uh, the yellow uh, legal tab, some uh, uh, several pages there. I, and, and it's kind of written in a, you know, a personal shorthand, and it's hard to read the script and, and the, the notes. So, but, so uh, these different fireplaces I built out there experimenting with uh, some different rocket stoves and different try to mass heaters. My first 11 days, it was a lot colder. So this last time, I built me a real nice uh, fireplace and uh, I've enjoyed, some, you know, sitting by the firelight. But anyway, so the second page that I, I read, it was uh, a book from back in the, well, the story is back in the 1800s and they're in Española, that's Spain. It's Spain, yeah, for you know, speaking the too good, the, the Spanish language and the English together, right? But anyways, uh, a stove, one of the first stoves in the community. It's not Italian and, uh, to me. So yeah. fire, fire, yes. It, it's in Italian and Spanish, man, okay? Forget about it. Who do you think Cristobal Columbus was? Okay. <laughs> fire. I, and you know, some of you all know. Hans knows I'm the god of fire, or fire god. And anyways. Uh, like, uh, Arthur, the, like Arthur Brown? Is that what you're trying to say there? No, I'm more like... Uh, the fire god, Vinny. <laughs> you, you know the crazy. Uh, you know the, you know the crazy world of Arthur Brown, right? No, I don't. You know, you've got a song me. called Fire, and it starts off. I am the god of ill fire, and I bring you fire. <laughs> I like it. You should post that. It's the crazy, uh, crazy world of Arthur Brown. It's on the YouTube. You can find it. I, I think this is dread. Is Hans just trying to be a a ho? Probably. He just trying to jerk my he, He's Hans. He's Hans. Yeah. Just, he he real does he not realize I'm his only friend here? Oh uh, no maybe no. There's, there's there's a secret love affair going on between Hans and Slim Jim Flem. They they act oh. like they're, they they act like they're all at each other's throats, but I, I think they're all at something else. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, of all things. <laughs> So, anyways, I've only read a, a portion of this handwritten uh, these notes here, and guess what it's on? It, it just it was so amazing. It, but again, I was not surprised. Radio, doing radio and um, presentation and um, presenting your questions and how far to go and, and and when to leave off. And it's just like a you know the 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 fleece Jason put out. Uh, Give me one that's dry and uh, and the grass be have dew, and then the, say again. Well, let let the fleece have dew on it, but not the grass. So things like that. I I test God and uh, many times in my life and and have very similar things. So like I said, I'm pretty hard headed and I need a lot of proof for things. You know, I just don't I just don't believe stuff just to, because uh, you know appeal to authority or anything like that. I, I you know. As far as my faith in God, it's it's scientific. It's not. Uh, I always say uh, many times that I have no faith in the existence of God. It, for me, it's evident. So, but I, well, I don't. You know, there, uh, there, there is. It, it's amazing to me, quite often times, the uh, synchronicities that go on with whether it be things that you're doing or things that you're thinking about. 
and, and then mm-hmm. and then the information that comes at you. It, it's it's amazing it the synchronicities that exist. It is amazing, isn't it? I I'm absolutely astounded and loving life. And I'm forced to get, uh, famous in, in a sense, you know, as um, standing outside April 11th, and this goes to my testimony that I didn't uh, give as uh, being on the witness list in the bunny trial. Sure. Uh, April 11th, about two or three o'clock in the morning, and Jason Patrick and I were talking, and unbeknownst to us, uh, Ammon was listening to us and came out, and we started talking la di da. But uh, as as it leads up to the next morning, uh, Ammon says, "Hey." You think you can get uh, some speakers and some sound system going here up on this uh, trailer for our uh, uh, come to me or, uh, come to Jesus meeting we're going to have with the sheriff? I made that part up, but anyways, uh, so yeah, I said sure, I can do that, and uh, I'm looking around and I'd already uh, found old Pete Santilli and introduced myself to him and told him the you know I'd worked with people like Suzanne Posel and uh, uh, Zsa Janine Gordon both of whom he had uh, uh, allegedly screwed over. And so I'm not sh- so sure, you know, how much of that information is true or not. But he stopped and looked at me when I told him that because I was a nobody really to him. And he's like, man, those people are in trouble. But anyway, <laughs> he's not the thing about Pete. But well, I do credit well, Pete. Well, definitely in trouble. trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I do, uh, I do uh, credit Pete Santilli with saving the lives of uh, the Bundy family. Had it not been for his video, you know, the people wouldn't have come in the numbers like that. You know, there was uh, several thousand people in total and, and hundreds, certainly hundreds of people that, that day, the April the 12th. So anyways, I say, hey, Pete, I said, uh, Emma needs a, a, a sound system set up here. Can uh, can you handle that? He says, uh, sure, but I need a truck uh, to go into Mesquite to get it. I said, uh, who's got a truck for Pete Santilli? So I says, here, I got one. Tossed him his keys, uh, and I also ordered the uh, the buttons that that came the no BLM BLM with the the red circle and the line through it. Right. So I ordered them from the the printer guy there in Mesquite, and uh, so I, I figure you know I earned a little bit of uh, a free range, you know, kind of like them cows, and I, you don't fence me in. So uh, as uh, Gillespie's up there on stage and uh, Ammon's talking, I. Uh, angle myself up onto the top back there and get back there. And that's where you'll see my photograph back there by the flag uh, and film Emmett Bundy and also uh, Clive and Bundy, as I like to tell it, telling Sheriff Gillespie how the cows eat the cabbage or give them a talking to if you don't speak Southernese. For some of you Yankees in Boston are listening. And that's why I'm forced to get famous. You know, I just happened to be there, right, to the right time. And so uh, I've spent these last few years, uh, and I think I qualified probably as an expert in uh, the field of the Bundy Ranch uh, standoff by the feds. So a lot of people assume it was the, uh, I like that meme that you posted, Grimner. Uh, it was not, <clears throat> well, I, I'm going to go back up here where I can open it up and look at it. So, uh, hey, I see Grimner ping me right here. Uh, I just now noticed the, open it up, this, what is twin, T-W-I-M-G? What is that? What? What does that mean, twin? A T-W-I-M-G. Oh, it's a Twitter com. image. You know, the, Twitter, Twitter image. Twitter image. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it says liberal. You don't stand a chance against the U.S. government. Just turn in your guns. Me? Do you remember that time in 2014 with a bunch of ranchers with assault rifles won a standoff against the U.S. government. See, now this is really uh, misleading. This is from firearmsunknown.com, and Reuters has done the picture here. So, but uh, this goes to where I was leading up to our conversation with the snowflake. Uh, Andrew, and, and you know what? He, he says it at one point. He says, I'm offended. And, I, and I'm in the back seat, and I reach up there to pat him on the shoulder, and, and he pulled away and cringed like uh, a guilted, uh, what is the word, a guilted, jilted lover? Oh, yeah, jilted, just pulled yeah. Away. Yeah, and, and a, a typical snowflake, this I'm offended defense is bullcrap. So he said, <laughs> to be fair, you guys had a bunch of guns pointing at them. 
And now I, I'm cutting this out of the video. This will be the first time I ever uh, edit a, a video. But I'm glad and give them a few cuss words. And the guys, I'm offended. I didn't come here to debate. I, 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 I'm not defend. I, I wasn't prepared for a debate. And, uh, well, Clyburn says, uh, look, you made a statement. How many people were pointing guns at the feds? He said, lots. He says, well, how many? 50%? 50 people? Five people? Two? One? How many? So the guy's on his phone and he's like, pulls up a picture of Eric Parker. They call him the sniper on the bridge. That's me right below him underneath the bridge. It, you know, it's another picture of me, but you can't tell it's me. It's me in a white t shirt, but I promise you that's me. And he says, he shows this. This is, uh, this is his go to. That's the only image he could come up with with anybody pointing guns, supposedly pointing guns at the feds. I said, you know what? I said, that picture was staged after the fact. He was not even pointing the gun down there when the feds were at the gate. This is, you know, they said, Give us 30 minutes and we'll pack up and leave. Uh, when they backed off, they were already supposed to have been gone. That's all part of my testimony, too, that I was in a knowing of uh, conversation. That's half of my testimony, anyways. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, as to the fact the feds were already backing down on April 11th that morning, but instead Dan Love uh, chose to uh, tell all those uh, some 200 agents there to hunker down, shelter in place. Those were the words used from the witness stand from, uh, oh, I forget the gal's name. She was, uh, <clears throat> I think she was the uh, communications manager in the ICP. But anyways, shelter in place and telling them, you know, oh, we all are in danger. Uh, there's there's nobody pointing guns at the feds that day. Nobody. The picture of Eric Parker, like I said, states, when you look at the timestamp, it was after the feds had already left. So continuation of lies from mainstream media and, and, and people perpet, perpetuate it, like saying that the Branch Davidians set themselves on fire when the government did themselves. Bullcrap. And, and when you get pushed into a corner and your little snowflake ass is melting and saying, I'm offended, and, and then fringe. <laughs> now, uh, you know, I really wanted to lay into his ass, but I, I did thank you, Daryl Becker, um, nonviolent communication, building that bridge, maintain it because, you know, we can't convey any information if, if we can't, uh, you know, bring it to somebody and they can't receive it. So they have to be receptive. So if you insult somebody, of course, they're not listening to anything you say after that. So I, I did work my skills and, uh, and did so with all the people that I, engaged in uh, in Riverside that I spoke with. One guy told me, he says, I think I said this earlier, I learned more from you in five minutes than uh, uh, five year or four years of uh, media. Uh, and <clears throat> you wouldn't believe this, but I did try to get to where I could be uh, concise with my information and move it fast because people have a short attention span that, you know, I can talk forever. And I remember the day when I first started, <clears throat> excuse me, doing radio and uh, I, it was probably near a year. Every time I was fixing to go on air, uh, I'm not kidding. I was, I was shake, I was shaking like a dog crap in tax. I was so nervous, you know. Um, everything is going to go right, uh, you know. Uh, um, am I going to have good content? Uh, all this and that. And now I don't, I don't worry when I talk in typo or you know typo typo. Same way I type, I talk and. Uh, yeah, deal with it. I, English is my second language. I, I speak American, and that uh, is, has a, a southern inflection. So there's a lot of nuances in language. And, and quite frankly, I think the rules of uh, grammar and all that stuff have probably evolved to I incorporate the um, the way our language changes. You know, it, it's let, let me give you a good example. Uh, the English language is influenced also to the uh, to the southern dialect. Uh, certain hillbilly ac accents have that same similarity to the way Hans probably talks, only with a German accent. Jawohl. And uh, that R. So, let, let's look at an example. Have you ever had a Maine lobster? Have you ever eaten Maine lobster? Yeah, but not in Maine. I eat them in... I have, in Maine. But you know what? You don't call it a Maine lobster. You know what you call it? A lobster. Lobster. 
lobster. No, if there's an R in the word, in the word, there's a letter R, you don't pronounce it. And, it, and if there happens to be a word without an R in there, randomly throw an R into some words, right? Uh, so you say Martha, you say Martha, you say Bar, you say Ba, uh, lobster, you say lobster. Uh, so uh, now putting an R into uh, a word, tobacco, you say uh, the hillbilly, which is common, you know, the Appalachians and the Ozarks. There's uh, some uh, some commonality in, in this usage. So instead of saying tobacco, you'd say backer. Put an R on the end of uh, a word. So if it ain't there, add it. And in Maine, they, as they say, you can't get there from here. But we have gotten here from there, and that similarity is uh, between the Yankee accent and the English uh, ancestry of our language and the Southerners. So uh, I think that's very interesting. But things change. And so, you know, I think the use of grammar. You know what really irks me? One of my, and, and the word pet peeve is my biggest pet peeve. But the, <laughs> when people say you and I, it's like, like between you and I, no, it's between you and me. Okay. So it's, no, it's, to, it's between it, us. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, you know, when you, when people say you and I incorrectly, um, and, and me being so poor in, in diction and grammar, you know, shouldn't really have any room to, to drive, but it's just like, yeah, and it's perpetuated and it's accepted. And now it is even, uh, I guess, uh, not only normal, but uh, grammatically uh, correct, according to many people to say you and I. So you'd say, hey, won't you give us that uh, a piece of that pie? Or, or you'd say, hey, give a, won't you give me and my buddy uh, a piece of the pie or give um Give me and you, or you and me, a piece of pie. Or you don't say, give you and I a piece of pie, right? So that's how that works. Uh, I, I think language is pretty fascinating. And uh, So anyways, back to the snowflake. Um, how many people were pointing guns? Well, I'm looking at this meme right here. You don't see not narrow soul. So, nope. You know what? I've got a cousin. i got a cousin down there. He's got an old World War I car being slung over his shoulder. Um, well, let's see, who can I make out down there? I know a lot of folks down there. All them cowboys, they ain't pointing no guns. No, no, but they, they, uh, they called it a standoff because you guys were there and you were armed. Well, I was armed well, with my uh, my you, phone, my say, feet, not, my not, voice. Not saying everybody was armed. But people were there and people were armed, so they called it a standoff. And the meme, and it says... Who won a standoff? Well, you didn't win. It's a standoff, so there's, there's not nobody wins. They're just they they went away. Well, the, luckily, the feds. Uh, yeah, right. They went away. If if anybody, if one single shot had been fired from wherever, either side, or a truck backfired and somebody took a shot, it'd have been over. It'd have been over because they got they got armies of people and you got what you got you got whatever people showed up there so <laughs> that's very you, true you, you and then pay. the guns would have been unslung had the had the bullets started flying hey there anti -handed. hey flash uh yeah i'm a grammar not c i don't see so much you know i get a lot of crap from my trolls um vinnie the vinnie the poop i am i love it uh, it died uh, in. Yeah, but uh, nobody was pointing guns at them. Right. And the feds were the ones doing the standoff. Remember, they were already supposed to have been left the day before, uh, about 24 hours prior. They were supposed to have already been leaving. Um, that's what Gillespie said, and that's the uh, that's what he told Cliven, and that's what I, Emin uh, told me, that uh, he goes, look, uh, uh, Gillespie's going to be here and uh, – he thinks we got a deal. You know, he thinks he's got it all smoothed over and they're leaving. But basically it's like, uh, Cliven said, uh, we're, uh, we're going to take this issue forward because, you know, just because they're leaving doesn't fix things, right? Nope, they're nothing. still overreaching. Okay. So the issue of the tortoise and the cattle, all the stocking horse, the tortoise two step, uh, 
two-stepping is bullcrap. All right? Uh, pardon me, pardon. Don't step in that. But I, uh, I've been seeing this meme. I've been seeing this meme lately. And it, I think it's from Borat. You, you know the one I'm talking about? No. I, I've never seen it. I mean, I, I don't recall it. If I saw it, whatever. Anyway, there, there's a, a tortoise there on the ground. And and uh, the, this Borat guy says, what kind of dog is that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've seen it somehow in con, conjunction with this whole gun grabbing stuff. I, I, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to look that up. Borat well, okay. and tortoise. Yeah, Goober. Uh, I, of course, the BLM that was there was outnumbered, but that's the government. They've got hundreds of thousands of people and millions and millions of guns, so. You had a couple thousand. We were outgunned. Yeah, you, you had a couple thousand people there, that, and that's great. That there were, and they stood up, and it was all, people were videoing it, it was live streaming, and they they couldn't just massacre you and, and come up with a lie. Mm. So they, they backed off, which was great. But, you know. <laughs> they only backed off, really, because uh, there were so many people there with, uh, you know, filming and Right, they, right. They yeah, it was, it was being live streamed. They couldn't get it right. Yeah, it was, be, it was being live streamed. There was nothing they could do. Of course, they they didn't care about that live streaming up there at the North Dakota ac pipe, pipeline access access pipeline. Um, oh man, they did some dirty things. Oh, they did some horrible up things up there. Uh, criminal. Yeah. Anyway, <clears> I want to anyway. get back. I want to get back to some tunages here and. Uh, okay. Can I stay with you, or uh, well, what time I, we got? Yeah, not, I don't have much that much time left. But uh, um, do, do, you, do you have any uh, additional comments? Or yes, whatever? yes, you know I do. <laughs> 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 I got to tell you, uh, and I got a lot of video. Um, what? Unless you got some more stories you want to share, and you want to run me off, I'll understand because. Uh, we could talk till uh, six in the morning, but that ain't gonna get me packed up out of here either. But right. we'd like to talk a little bit more if, uh, if we can listen to some tunes and come back. All right. Well, we're gonna play. I'm gonna. I'm gonna... <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm shutting up already. All right. This is. Uh, I, 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 I set this up earlier in the week because uh, because I came across it and came across the one, and I was like, well, that's good, that's good, I like that. What else we got with this? And then, I, oh, and I got this one. Oh, yeah, I got that one, and then there's this another one. So what we're going to do right here, right now, is we're going to let the good times roll three times. And it goes good, better, best. Enjoy. Good times be a rolling. Now I told you we're gonna let the good times roll. Times three, going good, better, best, and that's what we did there. Started off with Kenny Wayne Shepherd's version, then went to Stevie Ray Vaughan's version, and then Jimmy's version. And let me tell you, nobody beats Jimmy at that song. I I've done that with another song before, uh, Little Wing. If you're not familiar with the song Little Wing. But there's a, uh, and I could have kept on going with more versions of Good Times Roll, or or with Little Wing. There's just so many versions, but Jimmy wins every time, hands down, the best guitarist that ever lived. <laughs> but uh, right now we don't got Jimmy here. We got Vinny, multitasking Vinny. Yay! Yay! Uh, <laughs> All right. There you go. I you just got, you got, you got a few minutes. Sweet. You got, you got, you got like okay. four, four minutes. So go for it. Timing. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I love you, shirt. Um, YouTube flash. You, you know, you are two of my favorite people and miss our time that we used to spend every morning on a Skype face to face. It's an amazing world that we live in that, um, we can literally, 
face to face to one another around the world. And that starts with each and every one of us, one to another. It's not a mass thing. It's each of us. I, I set out five years ago nearly to change the world, uh, met James Freeland and brought me into uh, to where I'm at now. You know, so many people and so many things coincide. Grimner, what a, a wonderful place that you have here. If we if we could uh, uh, make a hybridization between UCY and uh, Real Liberty Media, we, we would have the greatest thing ever. And you know, but what we have is what we have. So we have our specialties, right? Um, and we we need to start pitching in when we're we are like minded. See, like Cirque's ready to to jump right on in here. So we'll have to talk. Um, and figure this out. But look, I may be going to the federal court in Denver. I'll be there two weeks, and it may be a little bit longer. I have to figure out some other uh, some times. But uh, I, I'm I'm running with this. You know, when they say, you know, this is cliche, but wondered when, why wouldn't somebody do something about that? And, and we are somebody. Now the important part is is how we transfer this information. Again, Daryl Becker, thank you. Nonviolent communication. We, we need to be able to temper and uh, deliver our information to people where they'll receive it. You know, we're fighting a very big uh, opponent here with the mainstream media, and uh, I've done a pretty good look at these guys there. Um, it's, it's beyond their just their opinion, and even if they disagree with their opinion that gets printed, it's the, uh, the propaganda and it's what's put out by the press, and, and there is an agenda. And to, to really to keep uh, truth from from people and lead them along by the nose and keep us in the system. I, I, there's so much I'd like to say, and uh, maybe we can. Uh, let me get with you on Skype uh, circle after this. I, I need to turn it over to to Grimner here. But let's go get this thing and let's let's do something here and uh, let's take this uh, next advantage right here and let's build up Real Liberty Media and let's pro promote it. We're going to be in Denver, so. Let's build this network up. And, uh, hey, you guys pull together. And uh, sorry it was only five bucks. I'm embarrassed to even say it, Grimner. Hey, well, it's great. You, can. you know, uh, you, you, know you, you give a lot of content, you know, so you're good, man. Well, I'm a poor boy. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we got Some we people love me, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's they do. All right, all right, right. <laughs> all right, we got to do this thing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vinny. Appreciate you calling in and giving and sharing all the information with us. All right, I guess he's gone. All right. No, peace, brother. I was shutting up. I'm over here typing into Bye-bye, man. Thanks, Grimner. Yeah. You're awesome, brother. All right. Later. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, a little bit of ministry there. Tearing it up, taking it down there. Ministry doing Black Betty. Awesome stuff there to close out the show this evening. It's, it's, it's been a great time. I've had a really good time talking with the folks in the chat, talking with Mr. Vincent Easley here on, on the headset, and uh, just having a good old time. I, I got nothing else to say except repeating myself. Uh, let the, the good times do the roll. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. I'll be back again next Friday with the Moose Girl, hopefully with the Moose Girl. Uh, in the Freakers Ball, and I'll be back on Sunday, of course, with uh, the Blues. Tomorrow you got the Dork Table at noon with Grammy and Flash, and then following me on Sunday you got Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, and then after that Gary L and uh, DG's Bo going down the road less traveled. Y'all have a great weekend. Peace. <laughs>